What's up, guys? How are you? It is a Saturday morning for the Daily Juice Podcast. My name is Matt Peralta. You can always follow me on Twitter at Sports Talk Matt. We're here every single morning thanks to BetMGM. And we're here after what was an awful Friday night. And this is one of the things where when the podcast is growing like it is right now, I'm getting DMs from you guys who are new. And a couple of you guys were saying, one person on Twitter saying, this is my first night following you. And look, it was a really bad night. And those things are going to happen. And I had not had one of these in a while, like dating back to January. So we'd been on a pretty good stretch here in February without totally falling on my face. So here at the time of taping, we're 0-3. There's a real good chance we're going 0-5, but maybe 1-4 because maybe the Jets are going to hang on here and win one nothing at the Canucks. But the way that tonight is going, it was getting kind of late. And uh, it's, you know, I I hate to get this thing out at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning Eastern time. I tried to get it out by midnight. So I decided to go ahead and start taping here and just kind of take take the punches, if you will. And if we're 2-3, and somehow if the Jazz come back here, they're down by 5 in the fourth quarter. If they come back and cover that 2.5 point line, that's awesome. But, you know, look. The, the slew pick was the worst pick of the night. That was just horrific. Dayton took them took them apart. I mean, I was shocked. I talked to Mike Corey, who called the game on my radio show, and we both were in agreement. He didn't know if they'd cover the line, but they thought St. Louis, he thought St. Louis would win. I thought St. Louis would win. They really need, they needed that win. And St. Louis very well might miss the NCAA tournament after that beatdown that they took. It was just straight up ugly what they took got, got from Dayton. And then the Northern Iowa game, I mean, they score a touchdown and they leave way too much time on the clock. And they they allow South Dakota State to go down and get the game-winning touchdown, 24-20. We bet plus two and a half. Plus three was out there, but, you know, the Jackrabbits covered all of that with that last-second touchdown under a minute to go. They score a touchdown. So that's just kind of how the night was going. The handicap was right. It was, you know, one or two points here or there. And credit to... The Jackrabbits for getting that victory, and, you know, it's just one of those things where you're like, ouch. And then Toledo and that over, I was scared about two bets. I was scared about the Toledo over, and I was really scared about the net, about the about the Jazz because, you know, as I said, the proper bet was going to be the Clippers given they were going to have Kawhi back and they were going to have Paul George back and they were going to play to win this game. I mean, that was pretty obvious, and everyone – I mean, the public was betting the Jazz like they already won, but they had won nine straight games against the number. So it was like, I'm not fading the Jazz, no way. So I was expecting to lose. I was expecting to go three and two. That was kind of where I was, knowing the Toledo bet was a little bit shaky, but they'd been so good. I doubled down personally. I had Toledo over 81 and a half. They scored 80. Ow. That did not feel good. I did take San Diego, sorry, San Jose State to score under 64 and a half points against UNLV. So I'm now personally nine and eight betting on UNLV games this year, which is not really all that great, but I got that right. So I got another UNLV game right. And, you know, it was no in three start. We, we see hockey fairly well. That's where I'm going here today with two plays in hockey for a half a unit. Normally, what happens when I get beaten up like this? You know, we go from a 12 and 10 mark to potentially a 12 and 15 mark for the week. That's not great. Uh, I, I tend to limp in. My hope is that the Jets hang on here and we wound up 13 and 14. And then I can go ahead and put two bets down and maybe we can wind up up for the week for Saturday. The golf bets are looking fairly well, good right now. I mean, we've got Patrick Cantlay in the top 10 and Max Hama coming in, in the top 20. So both those bets are looking okay at the turn. Both those guys are in the top 10 at the Genesis. So hopefully they keep that rolling and uh, we, we get to cash both those bets at plus 200 and plus 110. So that won't be a bad start to the week on Sunday if we can wind up some you know plus money with the Genesis open. So that's not bad. But, okay, so a couple quick things. We are rapidly approaching the deadline for Sunday, which will be tomorrow, for the Daily Juice cookies and the fundraiser. And so we've crossed over 200 orders, but we're not at 250. So if you haven't done this yet, if you've thought about it, and I know we have over $100 donated to local chapters of the Ronald McDonald houses across the country from people who didn't want cookies, just donated 25 bucks. So I've gotten four people who have shown me their receipts from donating 25 bucks. That's awesome. Thank you so much for doing that. If you don't want the cookies, that's a way of helping your, your local community and helping that great charity in your local community. Uh, so we're over 200 orders. We're trying to get ourselves to 250 by Sunday. So we've got about 48 hours left, depending on when you're listening to this podcast. Daily juice 
cookies for the 1 million listens to the Daily Juice. We're selling those. We're get, raising money for the Ron McDonald House. If you've thought about buying and you're like, man, I, I want to buy it. I, I want to do it. I just haven't done it yet. SweetSeasBakery.com. Sweet, S-W-E-E-T, SeasBakery.com. Okay? That, uh, that is the website. Go click, click on the Daily Juice, and away you go. So, uh, go ahead and follow the directions. If you've already ordered, look for your email. Look in your email, your junk folder, whatever. They're going to contact you with your own special link so you can go ahead and pay for the cookies, and they'll be getting shipped out to you guys. I should have mine. I think tomorrow I'll have mine, and then I'll be able to show you guys what they look like. They're huge. I've been posting in the Discord channel. They're, they're gigantic cookies. They're really – I can't wait to get a hold of them. I can't wait to try them. They look awesome. So, basketballs and footballs and – just really, really cool stuff. So, uh, baseballs and the Daily Juice 1 million listing cookies as well. So, that's very, very cool. And we also have the Greenland giveaway for that movie for the game on Sunday between Butler and Xavier. Go predict in the Discord channel. Go look for the movie giveaway channel and make the prediction on how many points Butler will score on Sunday. And the closest and the ones who hit it, five of you will get copies of that movie Greenland for free just for making that prediction. So, it's, it's very simple. It's very easy. Bettingpros.com slash chat is there. Bettingpros.com slash chat is that uh, uh, link to get into the Discord. We've had a bunch of people join in the last couple of days. It's been it's been very, very cool to see. And I, I just think it's, it, it's just a really cool experience. I mean, it's just the Discord channel is like a virtual bar. And for me, it's a place to kind of go and commiserate with you guys and Sure, there are some people who are getting angry with me about the picks and, you know, saying last night was atrocious, Matt, those were awful plays, and yeah, that's true, they were awful, and, you know, getting people who write on the YouTube channel, because this thing's now on YouTube, saying, man, those picks were bad, yeah, okay, <laughs> that's, if you're new, you're gonna see this, I've had worse days than last night, okay, and I will have a worse night than last night, I pushed my luck a little bit, and it burned me. And that's what happens in this game, okay, that's why, if you guys ever wonder why I bet half a unit's, and like, Matt, why don't you bet full units? This is why. <laughs> because in the COVID era, it's really hard. I mean, betting in general is really hard, but with COVID-19 issues and no crowds and whatnot, it's equally very hard to get this stuff right. So I always know this night's coming. I always know the disaster, the drop, you know, the 8-0 Super Bowl last two weeks ago on Sunday, right? Two weeks ago from tomorrow, that 8-0 mark is now followed up by a 1-4, 0-5 night. That's just how this thing goes. The yin and the yang of this is just the way that sports gambling goes. Money management, bankroll management, that's why we talk about all this stuff, about one unit, flat wagering, trying to make sure that you are able to survive this, which is the valley. <laughs> and we'll climb up and we'll get caught, we'll get going again and we'll make some good plays and picks again. But unfortunately, this is just the game, right? This is what we do. This is how things happen. This is why we're in it for the long run and for 220, 230 consecutive days, we've been doing the Daily Juice podcast. If you've been with us from the beginning, you've seen this before. This is not an un unusual thing. This is why the podcast is free. It's why everything we do is free because I know how hard it is and I know I'm going to have nights like I had last night. So picks, picks sucked. Yes, they were awful, but we're back. Sun came up, new day. New time to bet, and a couple of hockey plays coming at you, and the BetMGM offer is still available. Your free, risk-free, $600 bet up to $600 bet using the promo code JUICE100 from BetMGM. It's still available when you sign up for new accounts. BetMGM is available. That offer is available in the following states where you can go ahead and use this. i got to pull up the states as I always do here on the podcast. Why did I misplace that? There we go. The states are New Jersey, Colorado, Indiana, Tennessee, Iowa, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and West Virginia. You must be physically located in those states to take advantage of this offer from BetMGM. You must be 21 years or older. Please gamble responsibly. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700 in Colorado, Nevada, 100-GAMBLER in New Jersey and West Virginia, or 109 with it in Indiana. So the Clippers are winning the game, so we're officially 0-4. And, and now I can check hockey really fast while we're on, while we're taping here, to see if I'm going to go 1-4 or 0-5. So I can actually give you in real time, because the Clippers are going to win. Uh, it was sort of, I won't say it was predictable, but it was kind of predictable. Th this was a big game for the Clippers. They really wanted to win that game desperately. So there's four minutes to play in that third period. It's one nothing Winnipeg. So, I mean, I'm going to hold my breath here, and I'm going to hope that while, I mean, obviously they're going to pull the goalie here at some point for Vancouver, and hopefully Winnipeg can survive and not go to overtime. 
uh, and, and get a win here. So I, I should know this by the time we're done taping. I should know if we've gone one in five or sorry, one in four or oh in five. So fingers crossed on that one. Uh, it will take us from we were up 0.7 units. I did the math on this for the week. We were up 0.7 units. This will flip us. Uh, we'll wind up losing 1.5 units tonight, so it'll it'll cause us to be down about 0.8 units, I believe, for the week. So if we win both bets here in hockey on a Saturday, uh, we'll wind up ending the week just slightly up. So uh, let, let's get to the place. Okay, so the Vegas Golden Knights are taking on the Colorado Avalanche, and this game is outdoors. This game is in Lake Tahoe, all right? I've been watching a lot of Golden Knights games. I've watched in totality both the Colorado Avalanche games for the Golden Knights. The first game they won 1-0 because Marc-Andre Fleury stood on his head. The second game they lost it 3-2. I thought about playing the under here in this game, and I might by the time... I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I feel like this is another game where you bet the under at 5.5. But here's the thing. You're outdoors. I don't know what the sight lines are going to be. I'm nervous about what I'm about to tell you because this pick feels right if this pick was being played at a normal ha- normal rink. It's not being played at a normal rink. I think Colorado is better than Vegas right now, and it's possible that Kale McCarr is coming back for the Avalanche to play in this game. I think the Avalanche are playing better hockey. I think they're nearly healthy. And I think the Vegas Golden Knights are running out of gas a little bit. I'm concerned about Vegas' offense, and they haven't been scoring. And they've slowed down. They've hit a rut for whatever reason. They've hit a rut, and they just haven't looked like themselves. And, I mean, Marc-Andre Fleury's played really, really well. But asking him to play at this level every single game, they need Robin Leonard to come back. They need to be alternating these guys. they got to keep Marc-Andre Fleury healthy. I'm concerned about Vegas in this game. And I'm concerned that Colorado's offense might explode. And if that happens, that would kill the under. So that's the one reason why I'm not I, I'm not officially giving out the under. I may bet it myself personally, but this number is climbing. I got it at minus 115 on the money line. At last check, it was at like minus 120, 122, somewhere in there, that, that range at most books across the country. I think Colorado wins this game. And I'm a little concerned that it might get ugly. I hope Vegas wins, all right? I really do. And the game's in Reno, so it's in Nevada, and it's, I mean, it's just gorgeous where this rink is being set up. Both games, Saturday and Sunday. Sunday, it's Flyers-Bruins. Today, it's Colorado and Vegas. I just think Colorado's the better team right now. Now, Vegas might get better. Vegas might improve, but they're not scoring five-on-five goals. And if they don't get a ton of power plays, I think Colorado wins this game. So I'm going to take the avalanche here. I'm going to fade the Vegas Golden Knights in this kind of rubber match, if you will. Game one to Vegas, one nothing. Game two to Colorado, three two, and I'm a little concerned that the Avalanche might be winning this game big. They're super, super talented. They're more talented than Vegas, and if they get good goaltending, like I think they're going to, again, it's outside. Funky things can happen. The puck might move differently. It might be really windy. I, I don't know. I mean, that's the one fear about this bet is that outdoors, I just don't know. In Vegas, could play incredibly well. Vegas could get a bunch of power plays, but. I think the right side to be on for this game is Colorado to win the game and just take the money line and don't worry about it. Expect a really fun hockey game, but I think ultimately Colorado does come away with the victory against Vegas here in the first game of this very fun outdoor series that we're seeing here for uh, the NHL. So money line, Colorado, minus 115. And then the second game is and the Jets just scored an open netter so it's going to be officially a one in four night all right so there's an official while we're on the while we're taping here the Winnipeg Jets just got a uh, a open net goal so it's two to nothing and so they will win that game over Vancouver and we'll go to one in four a little plus money plus 110 on that bet so it kind of you know it softens the blow a little bit but it's still a pretty bad night so one down one and a half units and as I said we're up about 0.7 units so we'll wind up 0.8 units down going into going into Saturday where hopefully we're going to get a couple of wins here to end the week kind of on a on a positive streak by the way the parlay is coming up I do have a parlay for you guys we didn't do it Friday I'm going to do it today because I knew I was going to be light today regardless of what was going to happen I knew I was going to be I wasn't going to be going heavy here okay Islanders and the Flyers Let's talk about the Islanders here, and I'm not going to do the first period bet officially. I may jump in here a little bit. 
It was a 4-1 win for Pittsburgh the last time out. I don't know if Pittsburgh scores that many point that many goals again. I don't trust the Islanders right now offensively. I'm concerned about the Islanders offense offense again. They had looked like they fixed it and they've kind of gone backwards here just a little bit and the total is five and a half. The Islanders three to one, three nothing, four to one the last three games, all right? So they scored three, scored three and gave up and scored one and gave up four. For the Penguins, they did be, uh, beat Washington six to three, and they were on a little bit of a streak. But against the Islanders, four to one, you know these games have been a little bit higher scoring than what you would expect. Uh, four three, four three, and four one. The Penguins uh, are two and one right now against the Islanders. But I think this Islander team defensively, I'm just gonna go back and take the under on five and a half and hope the Islanders keep playing the same style of defense that they were playing in the first game where look the in the first period it was one nothing we needed one just one goal from the Islanders couldn't get it and then it turned into just a, a, kind of a massive sweat here hopefully it's a 3-1 win a 3-2 win for one of these two teams i'm going to come back with the under here on the Islanders and the Penguins under 5 and a half at minus 110 for a half a unit so just two hockey plays that we're going with here i'm taking Colorado And I'm taking the under for the Islanders and the Penguins. And yes, unders have been the death of me. But I just I think that's the right side, the right play. And uh, I'm just going to hope for another tight, low scoring hockey game. uh, Typical of the Islanders, not so much of the series between the Penguins and the Islanders, but what we've seen out of the Islanders the last three games. Hopefully that continues with them not scoring a lot and them not giving up a lot. Hopefully not giving up four goals to Pittsburgh like they did in the last game. So. Those are the two plays officially, both in hockey. I'm passing on the NBA entirely here today, but I do have the parlay. Don't bet a parlay parlay. We missed it on Friday. I was going to do it on Saturday always. So here is your parlay. It's a three, three bet, three leg, against the spread, monster line parlay. Okay? This is six to one. Okay, so it fits. It's three legs. It's at least six to one. I'm not playing this, but this is going to be, if you want to sweat out blowouts, here or here's what I'm doing. Alabama, minus 14 and a half at home against Vanderbilt. They will kill Vanderbilt, okay? They're going to kill Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt's not good, okay? Alabama's going to run right through them. I think Bama kills them. The only question is, do they get to 14 and a half to cover that? Because at home, Bama's been really, really good. On the road, they have not been good, but at home, they've been killing everybody. So Bama minus 14. The biggest line of the day, (laughs) San Diego up against Gonzaga. Gonzaga is minus 32 and a half. Gonzaga covers these lines. It's kind of remarkable, but Gonzaga covers these lines. I don't know how, but they've been covering these ridiculous lines. 32 and a half, Gonzaga to cover. I I thought about just laying and taking the 32 and a half and saying, okay, I'm going to take San Diego on that, but I just was like, "Ah, I can't do that because it's Gonzaga. I I just couldn't do it. So Alabama minus 14 and a half. Gonzaga minus 32 and a half, and then Belmont. So if you guys have been following me on Twitter, I've been talking to a bunch of people about Belmont and what Belmont has looked like. A lot of people have been trying to get me on this Belmont bandwagon saying, Matt, you know, Belmont's a a wagon right now. They're just consistently doing this. They're covering left and right. You got to get on Belmont. And now here Belmont is laying 21 points and... I mean, it's a big number, right? It's 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 a monster number. But Tennessee Tech is not good. Tennessee Tech is three and twenty-one, and they're three and fourteen in the conference. Okay, <laughs> so Belmont is twenty-three and one, and they're seventeen and zero. So all Belmont's got to do is just blow the doors off Tennessee Tech, and they cover. So Alabama against Vanderbilt minus fourteen and a half. Gonzaga up against San Diego at thirty-two and a half which is just like a you <laughs> 32 and a half for Gonzaga. It, it, you know, on principle, it should just be like, come on now, there's no way you're going to cover 32 and a half points, but these guys have been able to do this, consistently been able to do this, and they're the best team in the country, and it's not even really a conversation that they're number one, and San Diego's really not good. They're three and seven overall. They're two and four in the conference. 21 and 0, 12 and 0 in the conference for Gonzaga, and then Belmont against Tennessee Tech at minus 21. There is your three leg, six to one, against the spread parlay. And by the way, while we've been talking, 
the Utah Jazz had actually made it kind of like a game. It's 112-110. I don't know if they can get this to overtime or not, but I don't know. They, got, they, they, they might be able to. If, if free throws aren't made here by the Clippers, we might get to overtime, and who knows? Maybe Utah can save our tail here. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I doubt it. I'm going to say 1-4 because it would be a miracle, but – that game is still going on, and while we're talking, while we're taping this podcast, this game just keeps on going. The Utah Jazz just will not die here. We got them at minus two and a half, so I don't know. Maybe they'll be able to do that. And by the way, one quick thing here before we wrap. So everyone on the on the Discord channel wanted me to mention uh, Canisius. So Canisius played Fairfield yesterday, if I believe that's correct. So I'm going to start this on Sunday, tomorrow, in the Discord channel. If you go to bettingpros.com slash chat, I'm going to bet a Discord bet. So you guys on the Discord channel are going to be able to select one of the bets I will make for the Daily Juice. All right? We'll make it on Monday because Mondays are kind of a slower day. So on Sunday, Sunday all day, we're going to be kind of having this conversation, okay? And I don't know what I'm going to do. I may do a poll. I may have them set up a special channel for this. I don't know how we're, what we'll do exactly. We're going to organically let, let this kind of grow a little bit. But tomorrow on Sunday – into Monday, on Sunday night's taping, I will have a Discord play. The Daily Juice, I don't know, popularity contest bet or the guys on Discord. Because Canisius, everyone is betting on this Canisius team and they're making money on it because Canisius a wagon. Everyone's like, they're winning, they're winning, they're cashing, they're cashing. And they cashed yesterday. And everyone, a bunch of people were like, you got to bring this up on the podcast, Matt. you got to bring this up that, you know, the guys on the Discord channel, we're nailing this Canisius team and no one's watching it but us, but we're cashing. So every Monday now... On Sunday night, heading into Monday, I'm going to bet a play that you guys pick. You guys will argue amongst yourselves. Find the play you want to make, and we will make it. So bettingpros.com slash chat if you want to get into this and you want to tell people about if you're making money on a team that's playing on Monday and you want everyone to know about it, saying, hey, look at this run these guys are on. Look at this under, first period, whatever it might be. And then if people agree, if the, if the, if the masses agree on the Daily Juice channel, on our Discord chat. Yeah, I'll bet it. I'll make it an official play, and and we'll ride it together, and we'll track it. We'll track it every Monday. We'll see where we go. So we'll do that coming up tomorrow in the Discord channel all day, and then I'll bet it on the podcast for Monday morning for the Daily Juice. Again, the picks, only two of them, okay? Colorado money line under Islanders and the Penguins, and the parlay is Alabama minus 14 and a half, Gonzaga minus 32 and a half, and Belmont minus 21 and a half. That is a six to one return if all three of those things cash. It's 114, 110. The Clippers are leading with 10 seconds to go. Again, I'm going to think the Clippers win this game, and we will go one and four on the night. Again, my bad on the day. Let's get a couple of wins, and it is now a. Uh, what we started 12 and 10, so now we are 13 and 14. On the week. Okay, so we're one game down. 13 and 14 now after last night. Hopefully a 2 0 night will end 15 and 14 for the week, up slightly if we wind up cashing these these two bets in hockey coming up today. My name is Matt Peralt. Follow me on Twitter at Sports Talk Matt every morning across all platforms and on YouTube now. It's the Daily Juice Podcast brought to you by BetMGM right here on bettingpros.com.